So um, a few take home points for the uh, intraoperative management of local regionally advanced thyroid cancer. And some of these have been mentioned um, earlier in the, in the uh, discussion of the cases and the take home points, but we'll just hit a few of the highlights. So preoperative cross-sectional imaging is critical. Dr. Yip uh, and Dr. Hughes also mentioned that if in doubt, uh, I do recommend a um, cross-sectional imaging such as a CT, especially when there's extra thoracal extension or lymph node involvement. Um, always better to do the surgery right the first time. If, um, even for high volume thyroid surgeons, there are certain practices that are, that are experienced with local regionally advanced thyroid cancers and certain that, that are not, um, uh, don't do as many of the local regionally advanced cancers. So I think it's always um, the sign of, of a good surgeon to seek help referral. Um, the um, specific, to get into a few specifics here, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, um, I think this was mentioned by Dr. Grubbs if, uh, a little bit. Um, if the nerve is not functional preoperatively, it, it generally uh, must be sacrificed and blocked. It's, it's, you're generally not going to um, be able to preserve um, any function if, if, the, if the patient doesn't have preoperative uh, function on a laryngoscopy. Um, you, can, um, you can see um, oftentimes significant discoloration and or enlargement of the nerve, which would suggest um, gross nerve involvement. But then other times it's simply, and actually it's more common that the disease is simply just uh, stuck to the nerve, but it's not, uh, it's not invading, involving the nerve. Um, it's, it's just stuck to it. And that can be more common in recurrent or, or revision cases, because there's also scar tissue that, that adds to that, um, to, to, to the disease um, sticking to the nerve. But um, if, the, if the nerve doesn't look discolored and, or enlarged, oftentimes the nerve is, is perfectly okay and should be preserved with, with meticulous dissection. Um, if the nerve is sacrificed, um, we should make an attempt for um, either a primary anastomosis. Um, if, it's a, if it's more than a couple of centimeters, it's oftentimes going to be difficult to do a primary anastomosis. Um, you can mobilize um, the nerve um, to try to get some extra uh, length, but you don't want much tension there. And so oftentimes, um, if it's over, you know, a couple of centimeters, um, it's good to do an ansa cervicalis nerve graft where you hook up the uh, ansa cervicalis to the distal uh, nerve stump at the uh, cricothyroid joint. And that won't uh, allow that nerve to actually move again, but it, um, it is thought and the studies would suggest that it would, it, it gives some tone such that um, it will, it will help in, in the patient's um, uh, long-term uh, vocal outcome. In terms of the lateral neck, I think Dr. Hughes mentioned in the case um, earlier, it, it is okay to sacrifice a unilateral jugular vein, um, but most of the time, I think we have to, to emphasize um, the disease can be resected free from the vein um, with, with meticulous dissection. I think Dr. Hughes mentioned that for, for well-differentiated thyroid cancer, most of the time, even if the disease is stuck to the wall of the vein, um, that, that, that disease is not um, actually... Um, involving the wall and or intraluminal. So, so it, most of the time it can be dissected free. Um, next slide. Um, in terms of um, a couple of other visceral structures, just to mention briefly, the trachea. Um, so subperichondrial trach, uh, shave resection of the trachea um, can be appropriate when the disease is not invasive of the inner tracheal perichondrium. We we recognize that the way that thyroid disease typically invades the trachea is not through the tracheal cartilage itself, but it typically goes between the rings and then it starts to infiltrate sort of under the uh, inner tracheal perichondrium oftentimes. So um, you, can, um, you can sometimes see um, gross uh, tracheal involvement on a CT scan, but other times it's sort of uh, in a gray area where it's really, you see that the trachea is um, maybe distorted, it's being pushed, and you can't tell if that disease is actually going to be um, to what extent it's going to be involving the trachea, you can do a bronch uh, at the time of the surgery. And if you see, or you can open the trachea as another option intraoperatively. And if you see um, uh, a discoloration of that tracheal mucosa and or increased vascularity, that's often a sign that that um, inner tracheal perichondrium is involved and that patient's going to be best served with the segmental tracheal resection. Um, or in, in, in rare cases, you can also do a little window most of the time it's, it's simpler, safer, uh, and actually overall better oncologically to do a segmental tracheal resection where you remove um, a segment of the trachea, including one, two, three, four uh, rings. Um, and, uh, and then the esophagus, um, the uh, vast majority of thyroid cancer cases with esophageal involvement is muscularis, esophageal muscularis only. 
Um, it, is, it is rare to have disease that's actually infiltrating into the lumen of the esophagus. And these patients who have disease in the lumen of the esophagus tend to have significant preoperative dysphagia. So if they don't have significant preoperative dysphagia, typically, and it looks like the, the esophagus may be involved on the CT, it's probably just going to be muscularis. And this can be dissected in a, in a plane that's superficial to the mucosa, um, and you can get a broad, broad front and, and, and preserve the uh, esophageal mucosa. Um, uh, for the rare through and through intraluminal esophageal disease, um, it will require a more segmental resection of the, uh, which includes the, the mucosa, and that can be closed either primarily if it's small, or you can use a flap to, um, to close that depending on the defect. Um, but I think it is important to whether, um, even in the cases where you just resect muscularis alone, you do need to, um, uh, in my opinion, um, uh, rotate some, some sort of muscle over that area to, to provide some extra protection for the esophagus, especially in cases where you're doing a lot of work on the trachea, um, you know, you're doing a significant tracheal shave or, you know, tracheal resection and you're re resecting muscularis, you definitely want to try to rotate some muscle. The easiest muscle to rotate into that area is often the sternohyoid muscle, or you can take the sternal head of the SCM and rotate it into the tracheoesophageal groove um, uh, and rest it over the um, esophagus and trachea there. So those are a few points about intraoperative management of local regionally advanced thyroid cancer.